Hi everyone, can you hear me well? Yeah, good. Um, very happy to be with you all today and we've got the luxury to have a very large room, which is great because we uh, need to ask your permission. Um, today we want to make this very interactive and that's going to involve you guys to move around the room. Uh, do we have your permission to do that? Yes? Okay. And uh, on the logistic point of view, there's also another thing we need you to do is to be prepared to have a pen and a paper because we're going to get you to write up something for yourself. Okay, so if you don't have it, there's some paper and pens over there which will circulate everyone. Yeah? Cool. Let's start. So our intention today really with you guys is to demonstrate uh, what uh, roles, uh, worldviews and perspective taking takes into um, uh, employee engagement in, um, you know, in agile initiatives. Right? So we're going to practice that and you know, see, uh, see how it looks like. So this is us, uh, taken this morning. Uh, very happy to be here. Um, I don't know if there's much more to say about us, but we are very good friends and having a lot of fun talking about these topics here in Singapore, but in other places in the world. Mark, do you want to share something with the group? No, he's quiet. <laughs> OK. But we'll have to stop him at some point. So, Right. So what's employee engagement, Mark? So according to Wikipedia, employee engagement is actually defined as one who is fully absorbed by and enthusiastic about their work and so takes a positive action to further the organization's reputation and interest. Whew. Yeah. OK. So a quick story about that. And I just want to make sure that we have the same understa understanding of engagement. And so you're going to have questions that are going to follow this. And when you answer the question, at least we have a common understanding. So. A little story about engagement. There's a story about uh, John F. Kennedy that went to the NASA Center, and he asked a man or janitor what he was doing, and the janitor answered, "I'm helping put a man on the moon." Is that engagement or what? Okay, so we can relate to engagement. We can pass on. Yeah. So I'm gonna just do a. We're gonna do a quick hands up uh, count. How many? How important is employee engagement in agile organization? So if. Um, how many of you think it's not important at all? No? Not very important? No one? Somewhat important? There's only four choices, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Last one is very important. All right. Oh, I was actually scared. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what if they say it's not important at all? We have absolutely no talk, so thank you. We can pursue. Yeah, we were wondering what we're going to do if that happens, right? <laughs> so, um, and so, how many of you believe um, that you know that agile is is helping employee engagement in organization? Not so confident compared to just before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm wondering, so with the rise of agile practices in organizations around the world, um, some people think that it's intimately related to motivation and engagement. So if we're agile, we're more engaged, we'll have more engaged employees. And a lot of you think that is, that is true, right? And so Mika, I, I'd like to ask you, so what do you think the worldwide average rate of employee engagement is? 63, 45, 28, 30, what do you think it is? Maybe 45? 45? Yeah. How many agree? 45. 45%. If have one person, 45. Hey, okay. you should be with me. People seem to disagree. Let's try, how about, how about 63? How many people think that 63% of the people are engaged? Whoa, we're pessimistic today. Look at that. Okay. How, 28? 28%. 28%. Okay, quite a few. How about 13? 13. Oh, quite a few. <laughs> quite a few. Okay. Well, the answer is 13%. As per Gallup poll, an official Gallup poll, the worldwide rate of employee engagement is 13%. Funny story, we just went to this MNC and said, our employee, employee um, engagement rate is over 65%. Oh, who, who made your survey? Our HR department. <laughs> The real truth is that it's actually much lower. In the, Philipp in the SEA here, in the Philippines, it's only 28%. In Indonesia, it's 8%. Singapore hovering a little between that. So that's the truth. Mm. So what's the basis for engagement? Basis for engagement. Um, so the root for all engagement, I think, is just plain basic conversations. It all starts with that. 
So what goes through conversations, right? Innovation, challenge, the communication of business needs, empowerment of teams and people goes through conversations. The quality of your stuff goes through conversations as well. How do you qualify? Well, it's not machines. Actually, somebody at the end tells you, well, this is good quality, right? And motivation goes through conversations. Is there something that doesn't go through conversations? Pretty much everything, right? And then we have, the, this is pretty much the, the outward mindset. This is how we communicate. This, we converse in outward and inward um, directions, right? So we say things and we also have to take in things. And some of, those, um, some of those items that we take in basically are for clarity. We take in for clarity. We also understand business needs. We communicate them, but we have to understand business needs. We listen. We support employees that way as well. We understand intrinsic needs. And we also communicate organizational vision, right, through understanding. Yeah. So we're getting to the, to the guts of what we want to bring up to you today. It's talking about worldviews, right? So we got in, and how to use worldviews in terms of your own um, reflective process for whatever you're doing in organization or in your own personal development, okay? So we're just going to, what we need to do here is set the basis. What are the worldviews we're talking about and what they mean, right? So the first one is... It, yeah, so the, I, I like this subject, by the way. I can go on like hours and hours and hours. I have a couple of people that attend some of my meetups and they go, yeah, he talks a lot. <laughs> so we get egocentric. Basically, we're going to ask you to take some perspectives. Your egocentric perspective is basically me, myself, and I. It's the ignorance of duality. There exists nothing else, just me, myself, and I. I'm not comparing myself to anybody. It's just me. So that's your egocentric perspective, OK? Yeah, and then we'll take you to take in an ethnocentric perspective. So here is us, we, they, them, they, them. So there's duality. It's us versus them, right? It's we are we are a pack versus another pack, right? It's it's the the, the the ethnocentric only exists because of the duality, right? So we'll play with that one also today. And the last one. The last one is a little a little more iffy. It's like world centric. It's basically. There is duality, but it's defined as us, we versus it. So imagine the world against global warming, the world against, we're all in this together, against animal extinction or whatever, a cause, it. So that would be a world-centric perspective. Of course, there are other definitions, but we'll use these ones. All right, so that's your world-centric perspective. Okay, so before we move on, just want to check in with the group. Is everyone clear on the ego and ethnocentric perspective? By show of hands. Clear? Okay, if not, we have to do like this two-hour presentation on each one of these <laughs> things. Okay, I think we can proceed. You can go? I think right, so. so here was what we're going to do. We're going to practice, practice this. So we, um, we brought this, and this is our, uh, something we use ourselves uh, in, our, in our organization. It's just what we call our competency framework, right? And it covers all the, some of the elements that we think are very in, valuable in terms of development in the agile space. Okay, so we're just going to use this one as a reference for the exercise today. So it covers different areas like um, being you know, executive, coaching and facilitation, training, and all the agile domains, maybe technical from a business or from a PM and methodology perspective, right? So there's a lot of elements in there. We're not going to go into the details, but we're going to allow you to, to try it out and use it, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is get you to create your own um, personal development mind map. So that's why we got you to get the, the, the paper and pen, and we'll get you to put your name in the middle and then start, start uh, writing up which areas you would like to develop, right? So the intention here is to look at this from an egocentric perspective, right? So for me, if I want to increase my engagement in the organization, how would I construct my own development mind map, right? So think of, you know, and start writing up all the elements you would like to work on or that you know already but you need to, to foster more. Make so sense? So to help construct this mind map, what we're going to use is primary notes. And the primary notes are the pieces of paper that you see, and they're actually part of the table, if you can bring back the table. So the primary notes are going to be project management mythologies, methodologies, business, technical IT stuff, training, coaching facilitation, and agile executive, which pretty much covers a lot of the, of the aspects in an organization, not all of them, of course. You can use this to inspire yourself, but at least use these primary nodes where you can fit your own personal development in. So start with your name in the center, and then the primary nodes to develop an egocentric development plan. Yeah. All right? So, so according to you, yourself, and you. It's all about you. It's and all about you. We, we're going to do this quick because we have a limited amount of time right now. So just whatever comes up first is okay. Don't try to over-engineer the map. Just go and 
put anything that you see that comes up first. So we have about a minute, okay? And of course, these are just examples. If you have other nodes that you want to put in, go ahead. If you're doing some marketing stuff, some HR stuff, um, if you want to be Prime Minister of Canada, that's a really popular job these days. Okay, so what you're supposed to be developing, if I can just get Mika to click to the next, uh, the next slide, what you see on the right-hand side here is what you're supposed to be creating, right? So start with your name in the center, and then expanding to primary nodes. So um, you have, in this case, we have leadership, agile domains, some coaching, facilitation, training. You can use those primary nodes to build on that, right? And then after that, as you can see in Agile Domains, I have Agile Lean. I want to know some stuff on Scrum. I want to do some us user stories. I want to develop some estimating. These are all things that I want to develop, right, as an Agile practitioner or uh, a manager that has, uh, that has the, the um, basically, I want to do an Agile organization. I want to transform an Agile or organization, right? And we also have some training stuff, some leadership stuff. So whatever will help you develop as an Agile practitioner is what you're writing down on your mind map. Is everyone more or less done to an extent? Yeah? I'll bring this one again. So note to self, next time we need two, two screens. Two screens. Let's, let's stop now. Wherever you are is okay, right? So now you, you're gonna you look at your, your your mind map and maybe start making stars where you think that is the most important for you in terms of development. Where would you want to work in first? So what we're asking you is make a backlog, but not necessarily rewriting the whole thing, but prioritize the things that you think are really really important. Again, from an egocentric perspective. It's so about me. for me, not considering anything else but myself, this is what I choose to develop next. All right. So now you've done that. This is where everyone's going to start moving around. Because we're creating stat stations around the room with all the, the top categories here. right? So wherever you put your most important one, just move along closer to the stand up near the, the stations which represent that category. Okay? So basically, so, the categories, and I'll just read them right here. So you have Agile Executive here. So if, you know, um, if you're doing some executive stuff, some management stuff, you want to stand over here. This is basically what you've chosen to develop. Over here is coaching facilitation. So you're pretty much wanting to become an Agile coach or doing facilitation work, and this is very important for you. Uh, being a trainer is more important. There's a difference between coaching and training. So being a trainer is back there. 
And then in those three corners over there on that side, we have some technical IT stuff, which is in the back. Yeah. So everybody that's a geek like myself, I'm a developer. Right, there's uh, PM and methodology here and business on this side. So right? what we invite you to do is look stand. at where your priorities were, categorize them, and then go stand in those spots, please. And if you don't have any category, then choose one, we got whichever one you want. Where are you guys clubbing? Are you on the coaching and facilitation? Yeah? And here there's a Agile executive, okay. Let's try to make a clear distinction between the two groups, if you can give a gap or something. Hey, you know what, Mika? I'm just wondering how Fred, the guy who gave the talk before us, would be upset right now with the few number of developers we have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to... Um, we're going to get you two guys to, find a, to go in pairs. So find a buddy in your own group, right? And what we're going to get you to share with the other person, and it's a very quick sharing, it's about 30 seconds, from your own egocentric perspective, I, why, what's important for you in terms of engagement and you developing that skill or that practice, um, to, and explain that to the other person, right? So we'll give you a quick, short 30 second time window to be convincing, to share from your that egocentric perspective, and then we'll get the other person to reflect what they understand and how they felt when you said it, right? And then we flip again, we'll do it again from the other side. Make sense? So find a, find a buddy in your own group. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hey, <laughs> guys, guys. You can go then. <laughs> huh? What did you want to say? No, I wanted them to start at the right time. <laughs> You're alone. Find, find, a, find someone. Okay, your attention please, guys. Stop. Oh. <laughs> Can put, everyone put their arm up? Put your arm up. Everyone put their arm up. Arms up. Huh? You're not speaking loud enough. Okay, so if the first person has completed, please go on to the second person. Tu parles pas, c'est pas. Ah ouais, ça s'entend pas. Bah, je te laisse le, tu le, je te laisse le timer. Okay. Okay. On fait quand même un temps, non On est pas bien On est. Euh, c'est la demi. Ah, c'est qu'est-ce qu'on voulait sortir encore c'est la difficulté de parler en égocentric respecté. Okay. J'espère qu'ils ont une... All right, time's up. Um, we're going to introduce a rule here, and I want everybody to look up to the stage. And this is a trick. I see there's a lot of agile coaching and facilitation work going on over there. And we're going to instill a, a rule here. Whenever Mika and I raise our hands, everybody starts raising their hands and stops talking, right? And you'll find this very funny. There's always this one group that never looks at anybody that keeps on talking while everybody has their hands up. All right, so that's the new rule. All right, so again, the basis for this is the conversation. 
right? Whatever you want to do in life is very important. But right now, we're concentrating on the conversation. So by show of hands, who found it difficult to initiate a conversation about themselves on what they want to do? Raise your hands. We have one. <laughs> it's very honest. It is. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. Sometimes it's quite difficult. Who found it difficult to pair up? Just to find somebody to talk to. Okay. Okay. Who found it easy? Who found it pleasant? All right. All right. So, yeah. So we want to share. We want to converse. We want to communicate, right? And this is a dynamic that we're trying to introduce in organizations that we're questioning in organizations is that we're putting these processes and structures in. You can have all this, whatever they're presenting, safe, DSDM, less, uh, scrum, name it whatever you want. You can put it in any process and structure you want. 20 minutes, okay, I gotta go faster. This is the problem is that we put in processes and, structure and structures and it cuts, cuts off conversations automatically. We rely on them for organizations to function. And that's why there's 13% engagement, all right? We're gonna notice a little difference. We're gonna test a little difference here. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's just a question for everyone. How many of you felt that um, what the other person was telling you was really compelling and enjoying you felt the passion? Right, so what, what's, uh, so the rest, of, the rest of you felt that was what? What was the feeling? <laughs> no, just please throw the words in. So who felt their partner was not engaged? Raise your hand. Not engaged? <laughs> okay, there's a lot of laughs here. Do I take this culturally as being, yeah, me, or no? Okay, maybe. Yeah. So this is a clue uh, for you guys. When, we, when you're looking at talking in the egocentric perspective, if the person is generally talking about I, but that's about myself, right? I'm going to have an in intrinsic passion about what I want to talk about. It's, the message goes very clearly. If, if it doesn't, if you have felt, ah, oh, this is fake, this is, you know, he's just telling me a story, he doesn't feel connected, then you know that there's something else that's, that, you know, it's not the really, really an egocentric, you know, perspective that's being shared here. Right? So get, get tuned to that because you need to know that you know, when you are, it's very important to be able to express yourself and by the looks of it, you guys are all comfortable doing that. Right? But at the same time, if the person in front of you is not feeling it, it's probably that you are not you know, genuinely expressing yourself. Okay? So be mindful of that when you're working with your teams. Yeah? So we have a little story about, around egocentric perspective. Yeah. This is uh, Damien's philosophy. Going to get that right? philosophical take on egocentric perspectives. This is my son, by the way. 14 years old, hockey player in Canada, and taller and bigger than I am. I'm scared of him. So I asked him, he's into philosophy. Even at the age of 12, he was taking like these philosophy courses. Um, I have nothing to do with it, by the way. He's, you know, he's, yeah, anyways. Um, and I asked him in the car, you know, being interested in, in philosophy myself, and I said, you know what? Can one person hold the absolute truth about a given subject? Just one person, right? And I'm thinking I'm going to trap him on this one, right? And then he, uh, he takes about 15 minutes to answer, of course, taking a long time. And then he answers, yes, he can. He can hold the absolute truth. If he's alone in a room by himself, he will own the truth. I was dumbfounded. I was like, wow, yeah, it's true. If you're in a room by yourself, there's only one truth, yours. Is that a tendency that we, have, that we apply in our own lives? How many times do we close ourselves in our room thinking that we hold the truth? Isn't that the origin of all conflicts and the origin of all challenges is that we tend to think that we hold the truth? And then he goes on to say, well, if he steps out of the room, he must accept that other truths exist. Wow. So that's my son. That's a phil philosophical take there. All right? So that's that brings us... And this is the segue to the ethnocentric perspective where we accept that other truths exist. If you do not accept that other truths exist, you're in an egocentric perspective, right? And we're telling you to build teams. What is a team? Right? What is a team? People. It's a group of people, a group of like-minded people that have the same objective, right? Hockey teams, baseball teams, basketball teams, netball teams, right? We all have the same purpose. Right? And that's the ethnocentric perspective. Yep.
So what we're going to get you to do now, since you have everyone still has their mind map in front of them, is to look at it again, but then start thinking at it. What would I need in terms of personal, you know, my own development, in terms of how do I would benefit the engagement of the team? So taking an ethnocentric perspective on your own development, right? So review that mind map. I'll bring that slide again and see if there's any other area that you would work on or if you would change the priority of the, of the things that you initially said on the first round where we look at it just for you. Yes. The team is, the, is your like-minded people, exactly. So you guys, it's the technical guys, technical IT. Here it's the project management methodologies and business. Feel free to roam around if your priorities change after considering an, ethno pers an ethnocentric perspective. For example, well, you know what? Yeah, well, I'm going to move from IT and go to business because that's really what my group needs. They don't really need a developer. They need somebody or they need some skills more in business, right? So that's going to happen as well. So shift your mind maps, shift your priorities. We'll see if they shift. If they stay the same, they stay the same, right? But see if they change. Be curious to that change, all right? Yeah. So we get you to look at it now, move if you need, and once you, everyone settles, we'll, we'll, we'll do the exercise again, all right? So readjust the mind maps and readjust your priorities if, if need be. Hmm? No, right, bon. Je m'en perçois que j'embarque dans les liens facilement, ça va bien, mais j'ai la misère avec le, le launch. Le launch. C'est plus on leur dit de compter ça au groupe, de, de groupe de refléter, ils commencent à leur parler. Hein? C'est le même exercice. All right. Almost there. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so now, uh, has, have we seen some of you move around? This is great. Uh, now, so the difference here, we're not going to pair up to do the conversation here, but you're going to, you're going to, each one of you have, you know, not everyone will have a time to talk, but we're going to give you about two or three minutes to uh, a few people share what's changed for, for them in their, in, their, in their perspective when they take an ethnocentric perspective. And the group, the whole group, anyone in the group that's listening in, reflect back on that person. So do a popcorn style, a few of you within the time allocated, briefly share what is it for you, and then let the group reflect to you, and then someone else goes, okay? And when we put our arms up, we'll stop and debrief, right? So it's basically the same, same, exact, uh, the same exercise as the egocentric, but this time in small groups. So you can form a group of five, six, seven, or eight. The ideal number is five, by the way. I don't know why, but it's five. So form groups of five, share, and um, yeah, so the same exercise, but in a group this time. All right? And go.
pas vite. Oui, à 10, 5. 10, hein Before the question. 10 minutes. 10 minutes before questions. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we're going to debrief, but to do that, we'll get you guys to go back to your chairs. It will probably be easier. Thank you, our teammates. Okay, so what did you guys, um, what was different this time? You don't know? <laughs> okay. What else? Still don't know. <laughs> so what happens? So what happens when people get together and you talk? How many people felt engaged, just a slight bit, in their little group? Raise a sh show of hands. Who felt engaged in the conversation? Okay. Was any one of you find it difficult to express yourself on an ethnocentric perspective? Nobody finds it difficult to express themselves in a group. You did? Yeah, what did you find? Did you mind sharing what you found difficult? Ah, okay. You're not sure, but it was difficult. Okay. And that's the reality, actually, in organizations is the expression. Right? We have these ethical constructs that the organizations put in. We've got to be careful what we say. We can't offend anybody. You know, play it safe. Then we have cultural identities. We have belief systems. And then we have our defense mechanisms, right? I mean, I'm not about to say anything to or, you know, reveal my whole history to somebody. I mean, it's just work, right? But that explains the percentage of engagement in organizations. And even though we put a lot of pressure on our leaders about developing their leadership skills and driving people and making people engaged, we often forget that it's everyone's responsibility. A conversation is a two-way thing. You guys are as responsible as your leaders in creating that engagement. Yes. And if any one of you, like you are here, I don't know, from this side, and you know, the, it's difficult to make the difference between the first one and the second one, right? This, the question to ask yourself is, you know, which one is working? What's, which, which perspective am I by default in? And what, what is it about me, well, about me and how I perceive that, that I'm not really sure about making the difference when I'm actually focused on you know, the duality and people around me or just myself, right? So if I, was very, if I am very comfortable talking just about me, right, what's my impact on other people you know, and the, in my re reflection process, how do I include people around me into the things I do? Right? And how does it affect what I do in organizations in terms of, you know, if I'm a scrum master, if I'm an agile coach, or a manager in an organization? So I'm going to put a segue here. I'm going to make a segue to what Mary Poppendick said upstairs. She goes, scale out, don't scale up, right? Well, what we tend to do as groups is identify to a group and have that ethnic or ethnocentric perspective. But what happens if we keep that ethnocentric perspective is that we're only building up. We're only identified by what we feel is common amongst ourselves. We build up, right? And we tend not to want to express ourselves on an egocentric perspective and build outwards. So you also need to learn when am I talking in egocentric or when can I express myself or how do I express my egocentric perspective as well because it's as valuable as the ethnocentric values that are, that are being put in. Does that make sense? And at the same time, if I only talk about myself, I stay in this egocentric perspective, I'm only building upwards. Uh, yeah, I'm only scaling up, 
I'm not scaling out. That conversation helps me scale out. I need to hone in to other truths. There are other truths. So that's going to make me scale out. So why am, what, what am I resisting to when somebody tells me that, okay, Scala is better than Java? Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But am I absolutely right on what I'm saying? And in resisting to that, am I only scaling up? Right? I think real agile organizations, people need to take those two perspectives, egocentric, ethnocentric, and sometimes world-centric, in order to really scale. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, the, the whole, the, 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 the key thing here is about, you know, you being able to, when you make, you are looking to find a solution, maybe when you're working on innovative projects, you are working on, you know, making a decision on something, working with your team at the end of a retrospective, you know, and looking at what actions are we going to do, right, is how do we serve every individual in the group and, and what, how do we serve the team at the same time. So create a solution, make a decision based on, that includes every, every perspective, right? How often of, I, I recently I was in an organization and they work with a lot of people remotely in Japan, in Korea and other things. And the, 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 the team members from Japan and Korea were in the room. We did that exercise of talking, take, talking from the different world views. People from overseas were having a very, very difficult time talking in the egocentric view because they were always at the service of the team. We, 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 we. And so in the process, kept forgetting about themselves, which created a lot of anxiety in, in their own you know, workday because they're not being served. They're just serving the group all the time. So when you're working remotely with people, tune in into that. Because if a person talking to you is always talking about the team, but never about themselves, there's something missing in the way we make decisions and the way we move together as a unit. Right? People are not being served. So that's, that's something that you, that's, we invite you to have that sensitivity into where, which perspective people are, take, are speaking from. Yeah? So we've got just five minutes. So let's go just straight to the takeaways. Right? You want to talk this out? No? no? Yeah. So the first one is conversation at the core of the collaboration. If you have not that two-way conversation and, and, you know, and you know, engage, engaging others, being truly transparent and truthful into what it means to you, you know, and what it means to, what, how you listen to others, then you, you will, you, you know, the collaboration will be very difficult. If possible, include all three views in all reflections be it innovation, you know, even, even your solution designs, any. And, and the more you think outwards, the more original and the more responsive your solutions are going to be, right? Just don't think up, think out. And just what I was saying before, be sensitive to which worldviews your colleagues are talking from. And tune into that and invite them to take another one. What, you know, hey, hey Mark, what's, the, what's your egocentric take on, on what's happening right now? Or what the, this, what the reflection we're having now? Tell me what it is in it for you, right? So just have these layers always in the conversation. Today we haven't spoken about the world-centric, and there's another one called cosmocentric. It's even <laughs> more complicated. But at least have the perspective around yourself, the, the group around you, and if possible, the organization. And all, and this applies whether you're doing SAFE, DSDM, or whatever methodology you want. I think you can apply this at all levels of, the, of an agile transformation. Because if not, you're not going to get engaged people. Get those conversations going. Build that engagement into employees. And I think it's everyone's responsibility, not just the leaders and managers, but everyone's. OK. So um, yeah, that's it. We'll have some questions if you guys have any. We prefer not to have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do have some, feel free. C just wants to go home. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Michael.